Hello, I'm Nick Mitchell and I'm a local environmentalist. I'm down Minster Marshes right now. Look, here's the River Stour. The marshes are under a very serious threat, not just from big companies dumping sewage into it for years, but also from giant developments. And here at Save Minster Marshes, we are mainly focusing on fighting the Sea Link project by National Grid. But there is other things threatening our landscape, which I'll mention quickly, three main things. One is the battery storage plant. Many acres of land just over there behind the hedges uh, have been turned to hard standing and giant containers containing batteries have been installed. This all of course in an extremely sensitive location, posing many threats. And number two, many areas around here will be getting turned into solar parks, turning our landscape into glass, proposed to be happening over in Ash at the moment. And three, Thanet Council have already allowed a neighbouring development known as a grid stability plant to be built next to the planned National Grid converter station just over there behind me. Thanet Council decided that building this giant grid stability plant and running the cable right through a 75 acre site of special scientific interest that contains an active heronry, they decided it didn't even warrant having an ecological survey doing and they gave it the go ahead. So they're the three other things, but right in this video, we're focusing on the National Grid's Sea Link project and the big converter station they plan to build. Now we live in challenging times. It's extremely important to be someone proud and to protect our environment. Threats will always come and go, and that will always be the way. Be the kind of person that tries to protect our environment. There are many people out there like me that try and protect it. We don't do it for us. We do it for everyone. We do it for you. So back to Sea Link. This planned converter station is big. It's 100 feet high, covering about 15 acres. And these sizes keep on growing. And much of this surrounded area will be destroyed and then covered in concrete with overhead cables, roads, and topped off with light pollution, noise pollution, uh, added rain runoff, inhibiting the marsh's ability to hold flood water, electromagnetic fields affecting migrating birds. It's just a great big giant industrial area being dumped on our valuable marsh. They will also be running their cable right through Pegwell Bay, site of special scientific interest. When they did this with Project Nemo about six years ago, it caused irreversible damage and the reserve is still scarred to this day. This spot on the marsh is awesome. It's the last wild place in Thanet. This area over here behind me is a site of special scientific interest uh, and supposed to be protected. It holds more protection than an area of outstanding natural beauty. Now, whenever there's a development, it's normally a go-to angle to shout about what wildlife is there. But this place really is seriously biodiversely rich. And it's the last proper wildlife area we have in Thanet. The important thing to remember is it's more about the importance of the habitat than what wildlife visits. And this habitat is golden. Hear that right there? Yes, you got it, that's a common nightingale. Singing right next to me. There's another one singing just there. And this field I'm in is right where National Grid planned to build a 100 feet high converter station covering 15 acres. Nightingale there, Nightingale there. Nightingale declined by 92% since the 70s. One of the fastest declining birds in the UK. And I've picked up six territories tonight and two of them are right next to where they want to build the converter station. 100 feet high, 15 acres, cover it in hard standing, fencing, light pollution, noise pollution, ro rain runoff, the lot. When they proposed this project, they didn't even survey what wildlife was here. And alone, we've got two nightingales right next to where the project is going to go. So what wildlife do we get here? Now, we get water voles. This area is great for brown hares. Uh, beavers use this river. Grey partridge, turtle doves, skylarks, lapwing, marsh harriers, uh, heron, little egrets, yellow hammers, nightingales breed here, uh, long-eared owls, 
barn owls, little owls, slow worms, grass snakes. Uh, lots of it is a bat roost site. We get toads, um, many, many insects, especially the various solitary bees. Many of the creatures that visit this habitat are threatened with extinction. Once this area is destroyed, the wildlife won't be back. All these creatures live on the edge. And we have to be aware that the construction process alone is extremely damaging and it will cause irreversible damage, let alone the ongoing threat of the development once it's complete. We absolutely have to fight for this kind of habitat. It's irreplaceable. And we now live in a decisive decade for the future of humanity on this planet. No nature, no us. Insects have declined by 60% in the last 20 years. Over the last 50 years, we've lost 73 million birds from our skies. We've lost 69% of the world's wildlife in 50 years. Only 4% of life on Earth is wildlife. The other 96% is us, our pets and livestock. Nature is continuing to decline catastrophically. Thanet is one of the most nature depleted places in the UK. The UK is among the most nature depleted countries in the whole world. Out of 218 countries, however you look at it politically, in the world, the UK ranked 189th. If you want nature to thrive, it's down to us to do something about it. Stand up, shout and fight. Too many of us are pushovers in the UK. We sit back while the rich get richer at the expense of our environment. We are being walked over by greed. Apparently, the battery storage plant over there already profits £300,000 a day. It's big money and it's unregulated. National Grid profit 1.5 billion a year on average and most of that goes to overseas investors. National Grid like to market this project as green energy and we all agree we need green energy, it is the only future but it should not be done at the expense of our environment. The biodiversity crisis goes hand in hand with the climate crisis. Don't build it here, don't destroy all this. They need to build this converter station somewhere else. And as Kent Wildlife Trust are saying, they're asking them to rethink Sealink. Slowly but surely, they are industrialising our beautiful landscape. And it's down to us to try and protect it. We ought to try and protect this place and its wildlife. So if you can, head to minstermarshes.com to find out more and see what you can do to help. And also check out Kent Wildlife Trust's Rethink Sealink campaign. Thanks very much for watching and help us save Pegwell Bay and Minster Marshes. Thanks ever so much.